That's the last word this morning. James Carville, thanks very much. Massive satellite barreling towards the Earth. Chunks as big as 300 pounds will crash down, but no one knows where. ABC's Neil Karlinski has been tracking, has the latest from Seattle. Good morning, Neil. Robin, good morning. That's right, the countdown is on and it's coming fast. This is a live track of the UR satellite right now. It just came overhead where I am on the West Coast. You can see it just over the tip of South America right now. But here's the strange part. Even though we have the technology to see exactly where it is at every second, officials at NASA say they still have no idea exactly where it's going to strike when it finally comes burning in in just a couple of days. It sounds like some kind of bizarre weather forecast. NASA is calling for a sprinkling of metal debris to fall from the sky Friday morning. They just don't know where. Even as we get to the final orbits, we don't know where along that path it's going to come in. And that covers a tremendous, a tremendous amount of land. The Upper Atmosphere Research Satellite, known as URs, is the size of a school bus, and it's hurtling back towards Earth at 1,800 miles an hour. Its current track has it at about 130 miles up, and dropping. Where it will land, well, that's the problem. It orbits the Earth every 89 minutes, but because it started tumbling now, it follows a new path every time around, passing over not just a whole lot of ocean, but cities from Seattle to Shanghai. Once it hits a critical point, it will drop out of the sky, and we really won't know that until a few hours uh, before it, it hits. Most of the six and a half ton satellite is expected to burn up in the atmosphere, but 26 chunks, ranging from just a pound to 350 pounds, will make it through, come crashing down over a stretch of four to 500 miles, somewhere between the tip top of Canada and the very bottom of South America. The crash zone is hard to pinpoint, but the odds of a single person anywhere being hit are about one in 3,200, more likely than a hole in one or a shark attack. In 2003, pieces of the space shuttle Columbia rained down from Texas all the way to Louisiana, sending smoldering debris crashing through rooftops and even landing on trailers. Officials at NASA think they'll only be able to put a bullseye on where this thing's going to strike just about two hours before it hits, likely Friday morning. That is not a lot of notice, but they say even if you're not directly in the path, it's probably worth looking up because the satellite should put on quite a nice show as it comes flaming over the sky again, likely <laughs> Friday morning. Oh, come on, Neil. Like you're, like you're really going to be looking up and there might be some, you know, 100 pound thing falling on your head, but, but look up there anyway. That's what they're saying. <laughs> We'll give it a shot.